Shane fighting a ghost? A devil baby? Nighttime Dan? Grab a snack and help us unpack all that and more. It's time for Ghost, ghost Files, Files Debrief. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan Bergara, and that thing over there is my colleague, Shane Madej. Shane? Each week, we look back at our most compelling evidence, behind the scenes moments, and answer your burning questions. This episode is sponsored by Casetify. A huge shout out to Casetify for sponsoring this episode. I'm gonna be honest, I leave my phone everywhere. In the bathroom, by the kitchen sink, on the top shelf, it doesn't matter, I'm only human. So I really wanted to find a case that could protect my phone in as many situations as possible. And Casetify's phone cases definitely fit the bill. Casetify is the world's most popular tech accessory for a reason. They use EcoShock in order to protect phones from drops of up to 21 feet. That's a 20% increase in protection for my phone. And I know I can trust it because it's been drop tested over 156 times. That's six times the military standard. Last time Shane dropped one of these bad boys off a ladder, but you know what? I don't think it was good enough. Let me show you what these cases can really do. All right. Gonna get on this ladder, but safety first. Cause I'm going to the tippy top, baby. So here we go. We're taking this to the top of the ladder. We're gonna go higher than Shane did because that's how us Bugaros do it. Pretty high. I'm just a little scared of heights. Is this high enough? I don't know. Ho oh, ho, we're pretty high now. Okay, I'm gonna drop it. Ah! That felt so wrong. How's it? It's fine. How's that possible? It's fine. What the f I, gu I guess Casetify is the real deal. And that is the Casetify guarantee. Another thing I love about Casetify is that they have a ton of different designs from a huge community of artists. Literally over 2,000 designs. They've worked with over 300 artists from all over the world to keep their designs culturally diverse. Plus, there's always the option to customize cases to fit your own style. Casetify has cool accessories like phone straps and phone charms to really make your phone case stand out. Also great when you're trying to figure out where you left it. If you thought Casetify wouldn't get any better, you're wrong. Casetify is also committed to sustainability. With their Re-Casetify program, Casetify has been able to recycle 51,000 phone cases. Through the program, they make cases with 65% recycled and plant-based materials, which means they reduce their carbon emission by a full 20%, which seriously makes me feel better about clicking purchase. Protect your phone in style. Go to casetify.com slash watcher today to get 15% off on your order. Thank you again to Casetify for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to the debrief. Wow, thank you, Casetify. Thank you, Casetify. Those are good cases. I took my phone and I threw it at a wall with that thing on. That's and crazy. And we know, we know things about cases, too. <laughs> Cold ones and phone ones. Hmm. That's right. Hey, That's we were at the Hull House in Chicago. Yeah, we went to your hometown. How was that for you? It kicked ass. It was. It you was had a lot nice. of fun too. I did have a lot of fun. He was entranced by the bean. He was I all. I mean, he was ah bean this bean that, laughing his ass off at the bean, mocking it, and then he saw it and it he was, cried. He sobbed like I a did. child. A single tear came. Down. I don't know if I sobbed, but a single tear came down my eye when yeah. I saw my reflection in the bean. They're right about what they say about it. it when you look at your reflection in the bean. It's like the first time you've ever seen yourself. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Enough about the bean, though. I mean, we could talk about the bean all day. We'll have a separate episode about yeah. the bean. But uh, Whole House, I mean, what you know, a nice historic place. We yeah. got some good evidence there. Uh, there's a devil baby. There's How, a devil baby. You know, added a new character to our, our growing library of, of rogues. It's oh. fun to do smaller locations because there's not as much walking around and we finish a little earlier. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's true? Yeah, I guess that's true. It's nice to not do as much work. <laughs> that's true. Work, uh, work smarter, not harder. A big shout out to the Hull House staff who uh, yeah. uh, invited us to come there. The staff was wonderful. They were wonderful. The and they, they seemed to love the episode, which was great to hear. It Especially to considering hear. the content of the episode. That's true. Yeah. No, you, you talked about nursing a, a devil baby and then... Uh, well, I think that's very sweet. And then we talked about their resident DJ that lives in the attic, Nighttime DJ Dan. DJ Nighttime Dan. Let's get into the evidence, Oh, huh? yeah. And now a debrief of our investigation of the whole house. Let's start with that evidence. Sexy. 
Okay, now we're gonna go over some of the evidence from the episode Whole House, if you saw it. Uh, if you didn't, what are you doing watching this? Go watch the Whole House, watch the proper investigation, and then come back here for the discussion. Anyways, let's talk first about the devil moment on the Ovulus. This happened later in the episode. Um, uh, Ryan, I gotta stop you there and just point this out, because I've seen people say it's driving them crazy. What? That you always pronounce it Ovulus. No. I've heard people pronounce it ovulus, and I've heard pr people pronounce it ovulus. So in this episode, I pronounced it both ways. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, devil moment. That's when the ovulus on my uh, walkthrough said, devil. That's true. And it turns out it did say devil very funny. Kill. Kill? Kill us? <laughs> okay. Now, I did actually see um, someone else online post their mm -hmm. ovulus saying devil, and it also said it in a spooky way. So maybe it's just pre-recorded to say certain words spooky. It wasn't like scary scary, but it did sound a little different in tone than the other words. I mean, I'm sure it's just some sort of voice generator, but I'd like to imagine they had somebody in a VO booth say all the words that the ovulus has. And then, that would be good. And then just, they had her do devil very funny. Or if one of them just sounded like Freddy Krueger, if it was just out of nowhere, <laughs> it was like, Welcome to primetime, bitch! <laughs> yeah. Um, but devil, uh, obviously, hey, you know, there was a devil baby. This got shortened in the episode, but it ch took Shane a good 10 seconds to put together devil and devil baby. Yeah, I, he saw I, devil, I saw and I was devil, like, I was like, okay, and then I kept walking around, and, and then after several seconds, I was like, oh! <laughs> like a devil baby! <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> Huh? I can't believe That's it. pretty it's good. That fucking fun. Yeah. It would be like if we were at Waverly and we got tuberculosis. Yeah. Or even just getting devil in a haunted house should elicit some sort of reaction, in my opinion. Yeah. From from some people, I guess. Let's get to another piece of evidence here. This is a, a piece of evidence that people have been talking about quite a bit. Uh, Shane fighting and uh, also beating the shit out of Charles Holt. Oh, now you feel very threatened because uh, you seem like you want to beat the shit out Hi. of me. Hi. Hide? Hi. Hi. Bring it. Okay, Do you, are you asking me to kick your ass? I'm good. I don't know if that means you, you're good, you don't want me to can't. kick Can't. You can't kick. Bring it. <laughs> you're sending mixed messages, man. Fight. I think I'm gonna kick a ghost's ass tonight, is what I'm- Bad. No, it's gonna be bad when I'm done with you, sir. Misery. Exactly, that's what you're gonna be feeling when you meet cute. my sweet fist. Oh, it's cute, huh? How do you like this? <laughs> I might have just hit you for all I know. Did that hurt? Huh? Huh? Is there anyone here? Am I hitting a ghost? Wrist. Mist? Back. What? What do you think about that? How'd that feel? Who is this? Who my name's Shane. I just beat the shit. Scared. Out. Yes, you are scared. Okay, Ryan. Go. Yeah, you go. Hit me. Oh, oh! Shane's <laughs> using that uh, that martial arts technique where he mimics a T-Rex. Yeah. In, Not, in fights it's with It's pretty fools. abundantly clear. I've never actually uh, physically assaulted anyone, which honestly, I guess I'm proud of. It was honestly, truly compelling. And, and look, and people don't... I, I'm going to reiterate this. When one of us are wearing those headphones and the other person is off doing their investigation, I can't hear anything. I had my eyes closed and I had my headphones on. I was just saying what I was hearing. And not only did you get some responses that were accurate to what you were asking, but you got responses that were repeated, which, which doesn't happen often on the on the uh, on the spear box. It's pretty funny that I that I allegedly got great evidence of a ghost, and I'm like, no, nah, I didn't. <laughs> it's pretty silly. I love. You remember when we were out on tour last week and who was at the microphone? They were like, are you ever gonna teach Ryan what a coincidence is? Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, next clip is uh, the uh, fire on the ovulus. Oh, I'm so excited to leave this house at some point. Fire. Fire, holy shit. Turn. Turn what? where? Where do, I want, where do you want me to turn? Start turning in a circle. Oh my God. What do we got, Bergoose? I just turned around. There's a fire alarm right there. It's good evidence. 
I think you know what it is? Most people didn't realize there was a fire right there. And there was also apparently no evidence of fire starting too, which is weird. Freaky. Which means they could be like phantom fires. Who's the devil? Devil baby very hot. He probably on fire all the time. Oh my God, that means if like a devil baby like strangled you, you'd have like tiny scorch marks on your neck. Yeah, you would. But they, he'd have a hard time strangling you because his hands are so small. He'd be strangling my Adam's apple. Anyways, let's move on to nighttime, Dan. Are we calling this evidence? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where? Where a Where? Dan. Dan. <laughs> nighttime Dan? Oh, and a real nighttime Dan we got yeah, here. We, are we not talking to Devil Baby? Are we just talking? Are to we him talking cook? to Nighttime Dan? Nighttime Dan, can you get. Disc? You're a DJ? Money. Nighttime Dan spins discs for, for money. money. That's pretty good. I mean, what else are you gonna call it? It's his name. I guess that's his name. Uh, well, there you go. That's evidence. It is evidence. The words nighttime and Dan. Uh, all right, moving on to the flashlight. In we gotta talk about all these? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Not Jane? Anyone? Anyone? Mrs. Hole? If you don't want us to leave, turn on the light. Turn on the light. Oh. You gotta be freaking kidding me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Is this Mrs. Adams? Is this you right now? If it is, turn off the light. If it's not Mrs. Adams and it's Mrs. Hole, can you please turn off the light? Who's left? Lady in white. Turn off that light. Oh, oh, lady in white. Lady in white, if you are Mrs. Hole, can you turn on the light? This is good. Lady in white, if you are Jane Adams, can you turn on the light? Oh, wow. Jane! That's pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Jane, this is you. I mean, it's an honor. It is an honor. You've done a lot of great things. You know, you were uh, considered one of the most dangerous women on earth. You know that, right? Oh, yeah, okay, you do know that. Do you want us to leave your bedroom now? If so, turn off the light. Okay. Well, I'm gonna leave because I actually didn't like that. Uh, one of the memorable moments from tour, the tour last week when we were in Chicago, my parents were there and uh, my dad and I were standing backstage. Ryan was sitting next to oh, us. God. And uh, as the flashlight scene played, my dad was like, ah, it's a mag light though, right? I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, you just move that to the mill, turns on and off. I was like, yeah. And he was like, so it's just a bunch of random on and off. Have you even it. watched the show? <laughs> Have you, do you not under, do you, have you watched that we actually explain that in the show? No, I just think it's funny that he was like, oh, it's all bullshit, right? I was like, yeah. But have you not You seen, just had two of us, like, just it was going unbelievable. back and forth. Like, when I, pong. when I was, like, backstage, like, he, I would hear his dad every now and then just go, hmm, bullshit. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus Christ, there's two of them. There really is two of them now. This is And then, like, the obelisk, he was like, how much are they selling those things for? They're making a mountain of cash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Insufferable. <laughs> I mean, look, we, we say it in the graphics explainer that the flashlight will turn on randomly. However, if it turns on timely over and over again, that could also be compelling because you can tap it to turn it on because it's basically a touch lamp. It's good entertainment. I do believe that we will get a, a figure on camera one day. And when we do, you'll have all of this catalog of these small wins, like the flashlight or fire on the ovulus or nighttime Dan. And you could be like, wow, they really wrote the book on just how to get evidence of the paranormal, and they've been doing it for a long time, and now it's the cherry on top to cap it off with this uh, this figure. Uh, and then once again, once that happens, Shane will crawl around on the floor That's in little guarantee. apology circles I'll and crawl, say, I'm sorry. I'll crawl around like a little piggy, and I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, moving right along to our next segment, Behind the Screams. Today on Behind the Screams, we'll be introducing a member of the crew. Lizzie Lockard. However, we did pre-record this segment with Lizzie before she left to Korea. She's coming back, but we we, we recorded this She's in the past. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to toss it to past Ryan, and then past Ryan is going to catch it from future Ryan and go, "Thanks, future Ryan." And then we're going to see that you know that conversation, and then past Ryan is going to toss you don't it have back. To explain this all. To Just do it. No, it's gonna be fun. We spent no, it's gonna be fun. Forty-five minutes talking it's, about evidence. It's gonna be Hurry fun. Hurry up! It's it'll, if it's fun, it'll be fun. You don't well, have to explain it. I'm just it. saying just it's gonna be fun. That we're talking to our go. <laughs> Thank you, future Ryan. As he mentioned, we're here with our pal Lizzie. So, uh, Lizzie, 
Come on in, come on in, take a seat, bring your little pillow. She's trying to set the record for the slowest walk in ever. <laughs> Look at that beautifully knit pillow. Did you make that yourself? No, I bought it at Target. Lizzie, I only have one question for you. Let's hear it. Who are you? i Lizzie. But what do you do? I make sure everything can happen uh, in, in the broadest sense possible. Book locations, book crew, make sure all the legal documents are taken care of. I talk to the people who are submitting evidence if we want to move forward with the stuff they sent us. Make sure Ryan and Shane are in the right place at the right time. I help oversee post. Um, you do a lot. a lot. She helps shape the creative too. I would yes. say that Lizzie's, the best way to describe what Lizzie does is she makes sure everybody has what they need and are in positions that they need to be in to succeed. It's like herding cats. And you're also on location with us. I am. So you've been into the bowels of many haunted buildings. That's right. Well, let's just actually go to a question about that. PK Transy, is this from YouTube? This looks like it's from YouTube. Has Lizzie been feeling any side effects from Rose? Any strange happenings at home? I'd be hyper vigilant if a ghostie disappeared into my body and then they put two eyeball emojis. Ooh, um, no. Is the two eyeball emojis because there's a ghost? And then hyper vigilant, just sort of like I think the eyeball emoji is. But there's two sets. Multi one of these. use, but one of them is sort of like keep your eye. The you side know? eye. You had a ghost uh, grinding up on you uh, last week at Saint Ignatius. That's right. Have you felt different <laughs> since then? No, I think somebody asked that in one of the comments. Uh, no, I feel pretty similar, but maybe she's playing the long con. You know, you think you're safe. Can you talk about your? Um, sort of anti-ghost tactics, where when you heard there was one on you, you just went. Did yeah, like two um, hops to the yeah. left. I was actually like three or four. Um, okay. I read All a right. pamphlet where <laughs> hopping uh, scares the paranormal. Did the pamphlet also and require please. that you fully lock your knees while you bunny hop away? Because it was an odd, you looked like a person who was just trying to learn how to do the cha-cha slide when they tell you to do the one hop left time. Here's you know? the deal, Ryan. I think you're just offended that you have not had to learn how to ward off ghosts oh. with the stiff knee lock. That's true. I haven't been taught the stiff, <laughs> knee, the stiff knee method. I'll teach you. Next location. This is part of a longer question. Uh, this comes from S. Don Scully. I love this episode so much. I actually got to see it live in Boston. It was so much fun. Very chaotic. Thank you for coming out. Now, uh, also, Lizzie, the age-old question. Are you a Bugara or Shaniac? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with C, none of the above. Uh, and this is not in a, like, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, you know, like it could be cool. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Which um, means to like me agnostic? that it's, imp it's implied yes. that you probably are a believer though, because a person who would not want to yeah, know has a Yeah, I fear. think that's it. I think, and honestly, he needs the numbers. Don't need the numbers. So I think it makes Remaining sense for you blissfully to just... unaware. We, last time this, we, we called people who were fence straddling, we called them cowards. Oh, I'm not um, straddling a fence. I'm nowhere near the fence. My back is to the fence. No, you're on the fence. I refuse it seems like to you're on acknowledge the fence. the fence. Maybe we'll come with a, up with a better name because I feel like cowards is mean. So maybe like um. The cool kids. At our live. That's sh my team. At our live shows a, a week or two ago, we had people who would come up to the microphone, and we'd usually ask them if they were, you know, sometimes they'd state what they believed in, and so right. they'd just say, "I'm a coward," <laughs> and I. I felt really bad. And we were like, no, you're not. Don't say that. Maybe for Ghost Files, we do have to workshop that and come up with a well, they're, really they're good. Well, the fence straddlers, really, you know, uh, cheek splitters. How about that? Cheek splitters. Because that fence, is going, that fence is riding up the crack, just splitting you even. So cheek splitters. You heard it here first, Lizzie Lockard, cheek splitter. I hate this. <laughs> this is my nightmare. A cheek, a cheek? We'll be workshopping <laughs> this throughout the season. So please just uh, stick with us on this and we'll we'll figure it out. We'll get away from that then, how about that? Because it's clearly a very sensitive subject. Ao, this is a pretty open-ended question from Ao. Lizzie, what's the most interesting part of your work? Uh, honestly, it's going to the locations um, and learning some history about the places, but it's just fun. They're it's, fun! It's fun going, I love traveling, love getting paid to travel, love going in places you wouldn't typically go. Alcatraz was really cool, because you know there was eight people on the crew and you know, I think there was a security guard and then our site rep. It's uh, incredible. So it was really neat. And a lot of birds. A lot of birds. Anyways. Cool. Uh, what, what else you got? Here's a, here's a question that's kind of in the polar opposite. Uh, this comes from Ashikaze. Uh, for Lizzie, 
What's been your biggest challenge with producing this show? You guys oh, make it look Jesus. you guys make it look so <laughs> slick and effortless by the time we see it. So I'm sure there's a ton of BTS things that you have to deal with that we wouldn't even think about. Don't as get viewers. it started on BTS. Oh <laughs> oh, y'all. She'll hop right I off that fence. I love BTS. Sorry, what was the question? Are they oh, what's, the, what's your good? biggest challenge while producing the show? You. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ryan. That's fair. Next, next question. Yeah, actually, this is kind of is a, a piggyback off of that. This uh, comes from a pirouette. Hellos, if Miss Lizzie is on board, <laughs> I would like to ask a very important question. Miss Lizzie. That's Miss me. Lizzie. How challenging was it to get the permit to film in the spooky locations, especially booking them all to yourselves? I imagine some owners are reluctant to brand their place as haunted for reasons. Thank you, and keep up the excellent work. Thank you. Why'd you turn into Dr. Evil? <laughs> not, I, I did it. I did do it. There was a little pinky One billion. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, That's funny. We got um, jokes. It's fine. I would uh, say most of the places that don't want to be known as haunted uh, don't return your calls. They don't. Probably. They don't. Actually, here's a question for you. Ooh, What's uh, for this, me? Is, this is for, for me. This is from user at oh, Ryan Bergara. Oh, oh color color at Ryan Bergara. Yes. At, at Ryan Bergara. Oh, yeah. What? In terms we of? have color. Like, we're both orange. Like oh, orange. yours is orange. Kind of. Happy orange Halloween. Yellow. Happy it's... Halloween. Uh, this is a question from at Ryan Bergara. What was your favorite moment at a whole house? Shane fighting a ghost. Oh, honestly, yeah. Shane fighting the ghost. That was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I have one final thing to add. <laughs> and I'm sure you do. <laughs> I saw a comment that was two weeks ago now. I oh, can't shit. remember if it was on YouTube <laughs> yeah. or not. You got an axe to cry some, here. Yeah, what did someone say? Somebody was like, Hey, just stop waving around all of your water mugs. We know there's no beverages in there. There are. There were. Yeah, I look, just I actually just look, finished mine. She just housed a Michelob Ultra. It's not it's sponsored true. by. It's not sponsored by Michelob Ultra. Oh Jesus Christ! And they're Christ. like, "Oh yeah, we know <laughs> that, you want us to go like spend money at your store. We get it. It's like, yes, we do. But that's we're thirst, we're thirsty people. We're thirsty. We're thirsty people. And guess what? We want to drink in style. Also, and we want to hydrate. And also, these are lovely mugs. Watchstore.com. Yes, we do want you to buy them because they're beautiful. Well, Watcher. I think anyway. we've 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 done what we needed to do here. Uh, so, Lizzie, you can you Thank can scram you, and head off to. Uh, actually, she's going to shoot something really cool right now. You guys don't know about it yet. Been showing this whole time. It may involve <laughs> one little Stevie Lim. It doesn't have anything to do with ghost files though, because uh, Stephen Lim's a coward. Uh, people who re don't want to know about ghosts, their team is called Cool People, and that's the team that I'm on. You just don't look at the fence. You're not a cheeky cheek splitter. Cheeky. Cheeky's pretty. Funny. They cheeky's cheeky. can't decide. Cheeky's, I don't want to know. Can't decide. That's we're, what we call them, cheekies. We're a fourth category. You can't. Uh, we can't be doing. There's this. no more categories. I don't you're a cheeky look at or you're... either of their dumb faces or the cheeky. He's on the fence. We've Goodbye, been now trolling you for seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheekies is good. Cheekies is really Cheekies good. Cheekies is fun. I, it's, it's, and if you want to go long form, cheek splitters. Yeah. Anyways, back to you, future Ryan. Oh, wow, thanks, fucking... thanks, past guys. Foot fell asleep. Okay, ah. that was fun. <laughs> oh, it's real. Oh! Uh, Lizzie's a real character, yeah. isn't she? Finally, it's time for our last <laughs> oh. section. Qua. Qua, that's right. It's our last section, Qua. Where we answer questions directly from you, the viewers at home. Including and two questions every week exclusively from our patrons over at Patreon. Uh, Patreon, you heard of it? Uh, if you're over there, you get to watch all Ghost Files episodes a day early, God willing. All right, starting over on Patreon Corner, as Shane mentioned, we will answer two questions exclusively from Patreon, which is a much smaller pool to fish from. And if you're one of those fish, you might end up I was trying to continue the metaphor and I realized get, get I ran. Get in the worm, but get then you in the get worm. No, the you, you might be one of the fishes that gets caught on the hook in a way that you like, not That's in right. like a more just like. I'm just, it's hard to continue the metaphor. What if I caught you in a net? You get netted. Moving on to the uh, question for Patreon from the Screaming Chihuahua. That's a person on Patreon at patreon.com slash watcher. The way your intro starts with the calls and a close-up of the phone is just like the question segment at the end of a magic school bus episode. I love it, but I'm curious to know if that nostalgia was intentional. No, it wasn't. I have no idea how it relates to magic school bus. I have no, apparently it's in magic school bus, but the I did phone? watch one magic school bus episode and it's the one where that dude gets sent to Pluto. Like literally this dude takes his helmet off and just gets like frozen and you see his face like horrifically get frozen and his eyes change colors. It scarred me as a kid. 
I what? never. <laughs> Whoa, it says Arnold from Magic School Bus dies. Yeah, watch, look at it. It's crazy. He's like, I will take off my helmet. I don't need this. So no, it didn't. It didn't come from that. Uh, but I will say that it was heavily influenced by uh, more just kind of like old noir films. Uh, what even like the music under the phone? I wanted it to sound kind of like almost like almost like Hitchcockian, kind of like uh, Vertigo. So I found this music that was like really fun. An ode to that, not so much a uh, Magic School Bus. Uh, we got another one over from Patreon. This is from Sierly Reintam. Uh, hey Ryan. Which device do you trust the most? Like when some evidence happens from them, for which one do you go, fuck, I want to die, that is a ghost, more than others? Sending love from Estonia. Oh man, I still think as cool as all the new gadgets are, I think I love them all. I sound like a parent talking about their kids. But I think the one that still, to me, always gives me the willies the most is uh, just an audio recorder. Oh. Hearing voices, to this day, still really, freaks me out. Uh, though I do like the REM pod because it shows it's a more clear way to communicate, just ask something to move towards a red light, which is very easy to grasp, like even for like these old timey ghosts. But um, no, uh, I would say probably just the audio recorder. Uh, shout out to Estonia though. Cool that we got some Estonian fans. Never been. Uh, let's go to Tube Town now. TT Qua. Tube Town Qua, okay. Uh, here's one from YouTube. Uh, this is uh, from Landon uh, Hetrick. Uh, do you guys think that in the future there will be a scientific explanation to what ghosts are or why they exist? Because currently there are many things we cannot definitively prove or disprove. My my thing is like I hope in the future it's gonna be one of those things where like you know when someone on Twitter will be something they'll say something like really snarky like oh imagine thinking that I bet I imagine that in the future someone will tweet imagine a world where someone thinks that ghosts aren't real. LOL, and it would get like 100,000 likes. And then someone under that would reply, imagine being Shane Madej, thinking that ghosts aren't real for his entire life. What a dipshit. I think it's good to have dreams like that. Uh, I think 50 years from now, when we're still doing debrief. <laughs> well, if we're still doing debrief 50 years from now, then clearly we haven't made much headway. By that point, I don't think the show will even have intrigue. We'll just be kind of like exterminators on Yelp. Oh, so at that point, we'll just bring the ghosts out onto the table and be like, T this week we've got nighttime Dan. Do a little dance. <laughs> and we have him in shackles. <laughs> Do it. Ryan and I will be in prison at that point. That's true. They'll have for, like for the an, crimes we've done They'll have most. an entire montage of Shane screaming. I'm already down for manslaughter this week. <laughs> That's true. You <laughs> murdered a ghost with your bare hands. Uh, two last questions from Twitter. Tweet down. Let's go to Twitter town. Tweet, tweet, baby. This comes from at Alex underscore Dupreeze. Dupreeze. How do you guys decide which equipment to use in which room? Do you just go with vibes or is there a process? Do you go through all of them or just one? Sending much love from myself and my roommates in Australia. Wow, well, good eye. Good eye, mate. Uh, is that good? Good eye. Jennifer Lipeese. Good eye. Jennifer Lipeese. Good eye, Alex. Jennifer Lipeese. <laughs> Wow, I love, I'm sure wow. you knew that was going to prompt horrible Australian <laughs> accents. I apologize to everybody in Australia, getting the notes app apology out of the way right from the jump. Anyways, uh, we do actually decide what equipment we're going to use in the room beforehand. We'll usually limit it to maybe one or two devices, and then we'll just use whichever one is more active or whichever one spawns more evidence. However, I will say that towards the back half of the season, we got into the habit, and we kind of did this in the other episodes now that I think about it, but we did get into the habit of using multiple devices at once. And I like that because it helps confirm things. Like for instance- It's like a remix. Well, like for instance, if we use the, a flashlight with the REM pod, both are operating under the idea of proximity. We could be like, all right, go to the REM pod. Okay, now walk over to the flashlight. So that way you could kind of like double confirm things. It's true. Next question from Sophia Kupo on Twitter. If either of you haunted a building, what would be your signature? What would you make a legendary ghost? What would make you a legendary ghost? Oh, sorry. What would make you a legendary ghost? Hmm, what would you make my signature? I'd make people's hair grow really fast. How would you even do that? Would you, but admit it. You'd would you go into their body and then push the things push through? Push it through their, through their skull, <laughs> which as we know, that's where the hair grows from. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd do. If that's possible. I don't know what ghost powers are. That'd be cool though. I'd freak out if my hair started growing really fast. I'd be excited. Oh man, I would, I would lick my hand yeah. and get it really wet. 
and then, well, then what? And slap them? And then just slap people in the face. A wet slap? A wet slap. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty upsetting. Or, or, I'd isolate who the tough guy in the group is. Like, who's the person that's like, I don't believe any of this shit. Yeah. And I'd pants them. Yeah. Or a wet willy. When's the last time you gave someone a good wet willy? Sarah gives them to me sometimes. I get so mad. She's such a bully in that way. Mari does that too. <laughs> does she? Wait, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? She, she she's actually to me the stopped because other... I was like, please stop giving me a wet willy. She... Well, that wraps up this investigation. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Ghost Files Debrief. And also thank you for watching Ghost Files. Remember to submit your questions on Patreon, YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram after you watch the next episode of Ghost Files, which, uh, where are we going? Oh yeah, we're going to the Whaley House. Ooh. You might have heard of it because we went there before when we did Unsolved, but like Shane has mentioned many times before, this was early on in our Unsolved career, so we really just walked around and looked at things, didn't do much of an investigation. Now we're going there, we're bringing all our tools. That's right. Uh, and if you want to see that episode early, again, uh, head over to patreon.com slash watcher. We got a whole bunch of little treats over there. Some behind the scenes stuff, some commentary. It's juicy. Also, fun little bonus here. If you want to see even more of us, God bless you, you can check us out on Tumblr's Top 5 Beatdown, premiering on October 25th, only on Tumblr. Tumblr Top 5, a special show where Shane and I fiercely debate topics coming in hot and ready from the Tumblr sphere. My number four is The Thing, which I believe is a euphemism, if you know what I mean. And joining us, Tumblr mascot, Copy. Copy, could you give me your best Jack Torrance impression? Wow, he's good. Really good. Ryan, you are really plugged I into mean, Tumblr. I guess I just know the facts. Copy, you like you, that one? Because you do that. Also, we're going to be doing another season of Top 5 Beatdown in uh, 2023. I think January. I That's guess. very exciting. It's so, an acclaimed show. It People is. People love it. So much that Tumblr got on the phone and they were like, hey, how do we how do we get on the Top Let's 5 Let's get a spinoff going. How hey, do we get on the TFB train? Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week.